while the CrowdStrike update is the root cause of the outages. It took out Microsoft systems that were running the program. Joining us now to explain more is Ann Johnson, Microsoft Deputy Chief Information Security Officer and Corporate Vice President. Ann, thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure it is a very busy day um, at Microsoft. Uh, so what can you tell us about uh, sort of, especially for us lay people, about how this sort of percolated through systems and then the process of, of turning that around and getting everything back up and running? Yeah, thank you so much, Julie. Thanks for having me on. Look, CrowdStrike uh, pushed out an update last night. This is similar for folks that aren't, you know, steeped in this technology all the time. Think about if you update updated an app on your telephone, right? Though this was not a consumer impact. This was largely enterprises who were running CrowdStrike as one of their security solutions to help them be more secure and fend off these large global attacks. Um, and customers who um, had solutions with CrowdStrike and it was a global IT outage. Uh, we are working really hard. We're working with CrowdStrike. We are having a lot of conversations with them. They have published guidance on their website. I would strongly encourage people to follow that guidance because there's a lot of misinformation, as you can imagine, out there um, on social media and in different places. And we also have teams of engineers working to make it easier for folks to apply the fixes to this CrowdStrike flawed update. We are working and having conversations with CrowdStrike. We've been on the phone with them all morning. We have teams of engineers, and of course we have teams of our support engineers working directly with customers to try to get them mitigated and up and running just as fast as possible. And, and I'm curious, how long do you think this lasts before you know it, it's fully resolved? We do see um, you know some recovery, but you know is it hours, days, and or, or just too hard to say at this point? Yeah, Josh, that's such a hard question to answer because every um, customer think these are large, the largest enterprises in the world potentially, and they have really complex systems. And because CrowdStrike is such a integrated part of those systems, there are times when they're going to have to do manual updates. We are working with CrowdStrike really fast to try to remove all of that manual process and try to get to a place where customers can do a more updated and automated process. But at the end of the day, customers are moving as quickly as they can with the support from us, with the support from CrowdStrike. And we're, we're conscious and empathetic that we need to get global business back online. Um, and when you have um, one of the companies that uh, you work with roll out an update like this, what kind of sort of, because I know it happens a lot, they put out updates frequently to try to address all of these threats. What kind of testing happens beforehand and what kind of conversations are you regularly in with CrowdStrike and other companies like it? Such a great question. So look, our engineering teams always are working with any of our partners who are publishing security features that impact our systems to try to avoid a situation like this, right? And those are ongoing conversations. There's a very rigorous program where the partner is encouraged to test thoroughly, and I, I certainly wouldn't in any way anticipate they didn't test thoroughly. This is obviously was just something that was unexpected and has caused this global event. And the thing we really need to focus on right now is getting people back up and running as quickly as possible. We are focused with CrowdStrike, with our customers are doing that, and there will be plenty of time post this event to figure out exactly what went wrong and how we can make sure that something like this does not happen again. And a broader question for you, and I know folks are asking right now about whether we are just too reliant, Anne, on too small a number of companies powering uh, the web. Well, it just seems to be a key issue, a key question folks are, are asking after this event, and I'm, I'm curious to get your take on that. Josh, I think people ask those questions after any event, right? I, I think that we, and I've been in tech forever, but I think that we always have to look back Post these events after we get, like I said, our focus right now is getting customers up and running as quickly as possible. That's where all of our resources are focused. But post this event, I think there's an opportunity for all of us to take learnings from it and make sure we do better in the future and that we work incredibly collaboratively with both government and businesses to make sure we have robust ecosystems so we can withstand events like this and they don't have this type of impact. Do systems need to be more open than they are now, um, ironically, in order to try to prevent some of this? You know, that's an interesting framing just because this was a third party solution. So it was, a, you, by definition, a very open system, right? A third party 
provided an update to their Microsoft customers um, that brought down global IT systems. And by its very nature, it's actually a definition of an open system because this was not a Microsoft law for against a Microsoft system. So I don't think that that actually is probably the move ahead opportunity. But like I said, the focus right now has to be on getting customers safely and securely back online, getting all these businesses back up and running. There'll be plenty of time post the event to think about what's next and how we build more resilience into the ecosystem. Thanks, Anne. Really appreciate your time today.